as Matt said, my name's Joff Kurtois. I have a business called Slow Motion. Um, we make gin. Uh, slow gin start, we started with slow gin and then moved on to making actual gin itself. I'm a former ecologist uh, and conservationist and a bit of a nerdy bird watcher as well. So I'm trying to manage all of my passions into one thing, a bit of alcohol and a bit of, uh, a bit of wildlife too. So uh, we're going to walk down the hedgerows. We're going to look for a few bits and pieces. Some, I'm hoping for chiff chaffs and willow warblers and bullfinches. Those are birds for those that you don't know. And we might hear some of those things. I can hear a chiff chaff already singing. So that's nice in the sunshine. Um, but some bullfinches. We might even get a chance to see an orange tip butterfly. And I've just seen a small copper, which is very rare around these parts. So we might see some of those things as well. But mainly we're going to be looking at the botanicals that go into our gin. This is our, our product here, hedgerow gin. Uh, our main product, uh, and into that hedgerow, well, some of you will know about gin, four main botanicals, juniper, coriander, angelica, and orris roots. Those are the four main botanicals of gin. They have to go into the gin. And then we add some little tinctures of other flavors that come from the hedgerow, so hence the name. So things like crabapple, rosehip, elderflower, nettle leaf, they all come from the hedgerows like this on the farm, uh, which we uh, then use. So first of all, we're gonna start here. This is not a botanical, but this is a bit of old English folklore. In amongst, this, uh, in amongst this hedge here, this is a bit of witch elm, which is full of uh, 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 lots of folklore. But this, I'm going to point out this. First of all, this is um, hawthorn. and uh, It's called May Blossom here. And uh, you may have heard of a, uh, an English saying, a British saying called never, never cast a clout till May is out. And that is the May Blossom. And what that means is don't take your jumpers off until the May Blossom is out. Otherwise, you're going to get cold. So remember that, never cast a clout till May is out. So that's our first, it's not a botanical, but it's a really pretty flower, providing lots of nectar and pollen uh, at this time of the year uh, in, the, uh, in the season. So now we're gonna walk a bit further down the hill uh, to, uh, to, see, to see some other bits and pieces. I'm gonna leave the bottle there for a lucky passerby. So um, just coming up on the right, this actually this area here, this bit of grassland, you can look down at these clovers, lots of wild flowers in here. This is a wild red clover we don't see. I'm gonna actually pick a bit of that for something later. But um, the uh, little yellowish plants in here, this is called smooth bed straw. Uh, and actually uh, it does what it says on the tin. So in the olden days, if you didn't have a bed, you'd line this, it's got really soft downy feel to it. Uh, so it's nice, literally, as a bedding to lie on. And also there's something called, which we don't have here, called ladies' bed straw, which is slightly fragrant as well. So this is smooth bed straw, but a really nice, beautiful plant, providing lots of nectar uh, at this time of the year. Uh, so that's another nice bit. And, and then we're just going to go over here, Abby, to look at the next thing that's going to flower in the hedgerows, and a particularly exciting thing for us and for everyone who likes foraging for stuff. And that is here. Uh, we've got some elderflower. So you can just see, you can get a close up in here. Uh, the flowers just about to come out. They're lovely white cloudy flowers up here. This is probably about two weeks away from coming to flower, providing lots of nectar and pollen. But for us, another key botanical that goes into our, into our gin. So we take the elderflower blossom, we dry it, and that will go into the distillation along with the other botanicals, but we'll find some more. This is a, a fantastic plant though, and also I'm sure some of you will know about making your own elderflower cordials and so on. Really lovely fragrant flower uh, to use. We've got some other things in here, some nice, actually some vetch, that's a pea plant. Really nice uh, kind of, um, uh, again, a really important pollen nectar source. So it is actually quite warm. I should have casted my clout at the beginning of this. So um, we're now gonna just amble down a bit further uh, and we're going to look at, ah yes, I'm just spotting it now over on the left. We're going to look at um, what we call a dog rose or a wild rose here. Uh, and that provides rose hips. Um, they were, rose hips are, uh, fruit comes out in sort of September time. Um, during, uh, during harder times, during the war and so on, rose hips were a really important source of vitamin C for country people. And they grow on, on this plant here. You'll be familiar with the rose. No flowers on here yet. These, are, these will come in two or three, uh, probably about a month's time. Uh, but this is, and then once they're pollinated, you'll get the rose hips forming, as I say, and coming out in September time. Rose hips, as I say, got full of vitamin C, so you might have heard of rose hips syrup. 
Um, so that's a you know really important source of vitamin C, but they add a really nice, slightly citrusy flavor to the gin in the background. Um, but they're little uh, ready orange, little tubes of fruit, quite unusual uh, looking, but uh, really important for wildlife and for us in terms of flavoring our gin. So I think um, that's the first part of, or we're gonna walk on down now uh, to see a bit more. I just need to remind myself, excuse me for looking at my phone, I'm just going to remind myself what we're gonna look at next. Ah, yes. Oh yeah, we're gonna go on a bit further down. See this, this hedgerow here, you can see quite old. This is probably three or 400 years old, this hedgerow. It's full of lots of varieties, a bit more witch elm in here. There's a bit of hazel we've missed further up, hawthorn. Uh, and that will tell you that this was probably a parish boundary. So the hedges that have the most diversity in them were probably the oldest and the ones uh, that would form a, a parish, uh, a boundary to a parish. So this will be Barton the Willows where we're walking now. And, and that will be probably somewhere like, let's try to think what's the next village along. My goodness, I've now told you Howsham that will be. That will be into Howsham Parish. So we're here now looking at the, another, um, uh, another one of our botanicals down here. And this is the thing that quite a lot of people who don't get in the countryside much fear uh, uh, quite a bit. And these are stinging nettles. So we use these again as one of the uh, botanicals in the distillation. Um, and, uh, but they're also quite good for eating. I'm not going to eat them raw, but also, you know, one of the things you might think about is uh, when you're picking nettles, how can you do it without getting stung? Well, at this time of the year, this is the perfect time for harvesting nettles, and you can just use uh, your uh, tops of your fingers. You do get stung a bit, but this top of the, of the nettle is the, really the, the, the most fragrant and the tastiest bit. Uh, they taste, what did I say they tasted like? I was just artichoke. trying to, artichokes, that was all right. I couldn't remember, spinachy artichoke kind of flavor, but nettle tops really good going into a soup. But again, we pick them and dry them and they go into, oh, I have got a bit stung there on my finger. Oh, that's a bit sore. But yeah, really nice, uh, really nice thing to use uh, for a flavoring thing. But again, in our, in our gin, just bringing a bit of floral kind of flavors to it. Is it true, Joff, that the, the nettles with flowers here don't sting you? These don't sting. These are so dead they, nettles. So they're dead. Do they still have any flavour? Is it worth picking them? Uh, the no, they sting? don't have a great deal of flavour. Uh, uh, and they are, I mean, they are quite fragrant, actually. But yeah, these are, these are what we call dead nettles. They're not dead, but that's the name of them. So uh, uh, really uh, nice, but certainly no stinging on these. But if they've got white flowers or red flowers, then you're safe to pick them, but not so good uh, for culinary uses, culinary uses. So, um, uh, so we're going on down now. So we're going to look. Oh yeah, that's right. We're going to look at now at. Um, we've done. We've done nettles. Oh, there's some in here. I saw this earlier. We found some garlic mustard, which again we don't use, uh, but I think it's just down here, Abby, on the on the right hand side. So let's go and have a. Actually, in here, this this tree here is a lovely field maple. Uh, you can see the sort of maple leaf. I actually don't know. Um, I don't know if you can get maple syrup from these, from maples, uh, field maples. I know maple syrup, syrup I, I think that we've got some Canadians in the room, haven't we? Maybe we have. <laughs> yeah, Matt, you can do live correspondence. Uh, so I don't know if you can get maple syrup from these trees, but this is certainly a field maple. Uh, and uh, I noticed, where did, where did I spot it? Oh, here we go. This is um, in here. This is a really important uh, nectar source at, at this time of the year. This is called garlic mustard provides a lot of, uh, particularly for orange tip butterflies. This is a parent plant for the orange tip butterflies. And if you scrunch up the leaves, you get a really strong garlicky kind of smell. Uh, not too much mustard, but it is a mustard plant. So I guess the seeds might be quite bitter and mustardy, uh, but certainly the leaves at this time of the year uh, give a really strong odor of garlic. It'd be good in a salad. Yeah, yeah. So we're again now moving on down. God, it is, it's quite balmy. Oh, we haven't said much about the birds. I don't know how much you can hear in there. I, I don't know if you can pick up. There's a chiff chaff in the background. The chiff chaff is the thing that says its name, so it's very easy to identify. Chiff 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 chaff, it says. Conveniently just stop singing. And there we just had an orange tip fly by. So let's see if we can catch that orange tip. Sorry, it's all happening here now. Uh, no, the orange tip is unhealthily flying quite fast away. So we've got 
we've got things like bullfinches down here, which are beautiful, rosy red male, slightly duller female, really pretty greys and, and blacks on, on the bullfinch. Yellow hammers. We're really lucky on, great, on Green Farm because uh, Richard uh, Hudson, who's the farmer, is really interested and has taken on and doing an awful lot of work. There goes the orange tip going back past us. It's never going to stop for Abby to get a, a shot, I'm afraid. So that really pretty brush fly just comes out this time of the year. Uh, so, um, and feeds on that garlic mustard that we looked at earlier. But I was saying, yeah, bullfinches, yellow hammers, tree sparrows, and Richard the farmer here is really, uh, I spent quite a few hours a couple of weekends ago trying to move lapwing nests from one of his fields whilst he was plowing it. So he's really conscious. And so we're really lucky to be surrounded beautiful countryside with really sympathetic farmers who allow us to pick some of these botanicals and to uh, and to come and watch the birds as well so but let's let's move on uh, and what are we doing how are we doing in time we've got another we're at quarter past so we get, we're moving on uh, quite quickly I'm just going to remind myself of more things we are going to look at um, so we've done oh yes we should have Coming up, yeah, we've got, to, we've got to walk on a bit further. This is actually the first, we're not going to talk about blackthorn yet, but uh, the parent of the slow, but that is blackthorn in there. Uh, on this side, interesting, well, we'll talk about, we'll talk about that in a minute. It is, it is quite warm uh, now, which is most unusual for, for Yorkshire. Uh, but anyway, let's keep on going. Mind out this plant, Abby, you're going to get grabbed by this. The thorns on the blackthorn are quite, so we're going to go on a bit further because um, we're going to look at some uh, we're going to look at uh, some blackberries uh, and and I think then we're going to we are going to look at the slow so we're going to go on a bit further we've done nettles haven't we yes so in here now on to, over to the, the left hand side here here are blackberries. This is a really good stand of brambles. We do make something called blackberry. Uh, uh, well, we make a hedgerow gin with blackberry and apple, uh, and that we use black pampit wild blackberries for this. But in here, this is a typical kind of hedgerow -y scene. Uh, the flowers uh, haven't come out yet. We've got another couple of weeks before we see the bramble uh, flowers. Really pretty. Um, but then September, October time for the fruits to come out. And I'm sure you're all familiar with blackberries, but fantastic kind of flavours big bold juicy flavors uh, from the blackthorn so uh, from the uh, from the blackberry or bramble we call them brambles up here so that's another kind of typical and easy foraging i'm sure you all know about uh, uh, about blackberries and then we're going to move on lastly uh, really to look at um, there's a bit more rose hip in here um, from the wild roses uh, from the uh, dog rose as we call it and then we're going to talk about Lastly, and the slows, and I've got to pick up something down here, which I'm showing uh, people. Where, where was that? There we go. So this is this is where the business began, really. Um, as I said, we I was um, I'm a conservationist, and uh, we were started working with a Yorkshire farmer up here to try and improve his farm. Not this one, a farm just a couple up the road, and uh, we were putting in place a conservation plan. Uh, and uh, we stopped one part of that conservation plan to help the wildlife on the farm was to stop cutting the hedgerows uh, every year. So we moved all the farming operations away from the hedgerow, stopped cutting the hedges, uh, and suddenly we noticed that uh, uh, actually we had then lots of slows appearing all over the farm because we'd stopped cutting the hedges every year. And so we both had an idea of, a, of a setting up a business, that, and, and that's how slow motion literally was born out of an action for conservation trying to help wildlife. Um, we um, we suddenly had another business idea, and that was back in 2002, 2003, and, and we're still here fighting on to this day. So it all started with here. This is the blackthorn. This is quite an unusual blackthorn. This this is a slight cross with another plum. There's actually very few thorns on this, uh, and, uh, and there aren't any flowers on this side because we're at the moment. This is facing north. Uh, so if you went on to the other side into the field, uh, you would see lots of and uh, traces of flowers. So I picked some of this earlier. So this is um, a bit of blackthorn. What I was particularly looking at is the flowers that have just finished. These finish, they come out, this for me is the first sign of, uh, of spring. Blackthorn comes out towards the end of March, beginning of April. Really pretty white flowers. And uh, what I was gonna comment on is um, something that appeared in the news this week, um, but that was about the importance of moths. Uh, and I know everyone slightly has a disapproval of moths because uh, of things they do for clothes. 
But moss, I mean, basically, if you like slow gin, or indeed our gin, because we use the stones from the slows in our gin, uh, then you have to love moss, because moss are the things that pollinate most things in the countryside. And that's what this uh, scientific research was talking about, the value of moss. Bees get all the limelight and butterflies get all the limelight, but moths are the real heroes. And so if you do love slow gin, you have to love moths. And they will come in and pollinate. They get covered in pollen when they're flying around. They are kind of, uh, kind of furry bodies. They fly around at night, as we know, and they go around all the hedgerows doing the real pollination. So they are hugely important. And these tiny white flowers, and blackthorn in particular, is, uh, is uh, pollinated by... Um, by those moths. This, this black thorn, to say it's quite interesting, not many thorns on this, so this is definitely a, 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 an area we like picking because uh, we love a slow that doesn't have a big thick thorn on them. They are pretty nasty. So um, that's, uh, that's kind of everything I was going to be talking about here now. So I don't know if there's any questions or Abby, have, have you? Oh no, of course, my handy colleagues have forgotten to remind me that we're doing a special offer, I think, aren't we? Yes, we are. Where is it? Are we, coming, are we doing that at the bar? Yeah, we're doing that. So one thing you need in these COVID times is obviously uh, you need a socially isolated bar. And uh, as chance would have it, um, here's one we made earlier. Uh, so we managed to find a bar in the middle of the countryside. I often come up here of an evening uh, to socially distance myself and enjoy some of our products. So we are, oh yes, so I've mentioned the offer now. I must, I must see through the offer now. So we are doing a special offer on all, all of our products from slowmotion.com, www.slowmotion.com. Uh, and for all of our products, the uh, Hedgerow Gins, this is our rhubarb and raspberry. I'm gonna do a cocktail with this, our uh, Hedgerow Botanical Vodka, World Vodka Awards winning Hedgerow Botanical Vodka. Um, and uh, so the offer is 20% off all of our products, our gins or our liqueurs, slow gin and so on. If you use Castle Howard 20, that's all one word, no spaces in there, yeah? Castle Howard 20 as a coupon for the offer. Uh, so don't forget that, slowmotion.com. Um, and it's also, of course, for those of you who are local to this area, it's also available at the wonderful uh, Castle Howard Farm Shop, which is open 9 to 5 tomorrow. It is. I'm being <laughs> nodded at, so that's important to know. Um, so I think we're going to... Do, they started making cocktail. I mentioned our uh, Hedro Botanical Vodka has won uh, the best flavoured vodka at the World Vodka Awards, which is fantastic. It is a, uh, it's a great product. So uh, for those of you who wonder about gin and vodka, I often hear people saying, I don't like, really like vodka, but I like gin. Of course, gin is just vodka with some flavourings in. Uh, so this is our Hedro Botanical Vodka, and this really blurs the lines between gin and vodka. So this is a botanical vodka. There aren't many of those out there. So this has got hedgerow botanicals, the crab apples, the rose hips, the elderflowers, and nettle leaves in the distillation uh, to make the vodka. So this is a kind of strong, floral, fruity flavored vodka. And uh, it's really blurring the lines between gin and vodka. So I recommend, it is uh, genuinely my favorite product, which is why I insisted they, uh, at the end of a Friday, long, a long week on Friday afternoon that I persuaded them that, uh, to make a, 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 a cocktail with this uh, because uh, it's my turn to, to have a drink. Maybe it's a little early. And one of the other things I was going to say is you can see, I hope you might be able to see lots of insects flying around at the moment. And again, we mentioned moss and no one likes moss. But insects, all these flying insects, they do get in the way a bit. But these are the things that also fuel the countryside. So birds, particularly at this moment in time, absolutely dependent the swallows that have just arrived here back from africa dependent on all these insects flying around they're going they're to scoop the hoover them up and feed them to their young so yes they're a bit of a bother but they are massively important anyway back to the drink which is even more important right now so because we've, we're at our hedgerow bar we're going to be using some of the things uh, from the house that we found this is our measure today this is a, obviously an egg cup and this does a perfect double measure. So uh, if you haven't got uh, your cocktail measure and so on, this is a perfect use for measuring a double, which is what I definitely need today. So that's uh, the, the vodka going in there. And then of course, lots of ice. I see someone already picked the clover to, uh, I'm obviously making the drink for myself, so I'm gonna be using my hands on this. Uh, everyone else can have their own, own free uh, ice. So lots of ice going in here. And what's this called again? This is called a, a, a along the hedge. It's called an along the hedge. So Hedro Botanical Vodka as a double. Uh, and then we're going to do a splash of 
elderflower, uh, sparkly elder, elderflower presse, uh, and just a splash of elderflower presse, and then some uh, cloudy apple juice just to give it a bit of body. And this will be lovely and refreshing. Uh, in the glass and then we're going to garnish it. You saw me picking a bit of clover, which is really uh, Really nice and sweet smelling a uh, bit of clover in there, too. Can you get a close-up of that? I don't know the ice is not Fantastic anyway, I, I can't leave this any longer so I'm gonna have to um, try a sip. Cheers. Chin chin everyone mm. That's fantastic a really kind of fruity, but a nice bit of um, dryness from the vodka and the botanicals in that uh, botanical vodka. So I don't know where we are in terms of time now. Have I have I rabbited on too long? So I don't have we have we got questions out there, Matt? We do have a couple that have come in, Joff. Um, just before we get going, is it worth saying that um, after this is finished, we will send out um, an email just with the recipe for the cocktail on? Yeah, if you're interested, and we'll yes. put the offer on there for you as well. Um, yeah. One of the just. Um, Whilst I read these questions out, if you do have a question, again, just hover down to the bottom of your screen. You can either click that chat button and type it to us, or if you click the participants button, and then the raise hand button, and I will unmute you so you can ask Joff yourselves. Um, we do have a question here, Joff, uh, which is, what is your favorite hedgerow product? Oh, well, I, I think I've already said it, and it genuinely is not just because I was holding it, but the, the botanical vodka, it's just won a world, world award or the best British uh, flavored vodka. And um, so it's kind of really, it's an interesting product. It's got a lot of depth and a lot of flavor. So I love that. I, I, also, um, I also love our Bramble whiskey on a, on a cold winter's afternoon. So not great now, but a cold winter's afternoon, a little tot of Bramble whiskey is, uh, uh, you know, would be uh, right up there for me as well. Brilliant, certainly warm you up at the end of the day, that one. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it worth just while we're waiting for some more questions to come in, maybe just um, talking a little bit about the Castle Howard gin that we are hoping to launch? Yes, somewhere? you're absolutely right. And I've forgotten to pick something on the way down, which was gonna, I was going to talk about. In fact, no, that, I think I've got some here, have I? Uh, no, it's not. Oh, yes, I have. I have. Yes, I have. So um, one of the things that uh, uh, we're going to be doing later in the year, after all this uh, awfulness with the coronavirus is over, uh, is uh, we're going to be collaborating with Castle Howard to produce their very own gin for the first time, which we're really excited about. Obviously, we, you know, I mentioned the four botanicals have got to go into that gin. Uh, so juniper, coriander, angelica, and orris root. So they have to go in. But we're looking for some things that are typical of the area uh, as well to go in there. So we're going to be getting some uh, pine needles from uh, some of the trees, the Scots pines, that are in the uh, grounds of the estate. And then particularly this plant here, which does nothing at this time of the year. This is called uh, uh, meadow sweet. Uh, it's a really ancient plant, but come uh, later in the summer, it's really, really strongly fragrant. So a bit of um, meadow sweet. And as uh, for those who have been to Castle Howard, as you drive along the roads through the arches there, on the left-hand side, particularly as you're coming from here, there's often acres of, uh, of wonderful uh, meadow sweet. It's got a, such a fragrant flavor, a smell and flavor. Uh, and lots of big white cloudy flowers that appear in sort of June, July time. So that's a, for me, uh, as an ecologist, when I'm driving through Castle Hill, that's what I think of. So that's, that'll be one of the other botanicals that we're going to be using in that product in our, in our still. Um, and I have mentioned about our still, one of the important things for us, uh, and we're not looking in the distillery today, but, you know, as a conservationist and environmentalist, you know, there, there are some really important things, decision when you're running businesses, trying to minimize all the time your impacts on the environment. And we, when we are choosing our still, and people may have a vision of a, a, what a still looks like, but for us, you know, which is often a, you know, sort of copper alembic still, this beautiful uh, swan neck thing. When we started looking at stills, really we, we felt we couldn't do that because copper, uh, as many people know, is very conductive. A, a, a still is basically a kettle, you're heating, putting a huge amount of heat in there to boil up what's inside the botanicals and, the, uh, and essentially the vodka. 
So we wanted something that was much greener and a less a smaller carbon footprint. So we actually got something called an iStill, which is a big square box. It doesn't look very romantic, but it is hugely saving energy. Three or four times less energy goes into producing our gin than any other gin, which is a really important thing for us and really the only responsible decision you could make we could make as distillers. So that's a that's an important footnote for, for the business. We're not just interested out here and conserving this countryside here, but it's also about our energy use as well and the responsibilities that we have as business owners. So we recycle everything. All our cardboard actually gets either shredded to go into packaging or it goes back onto the land as a soil conditioner uh, and things like that. We recycle, of course, all our glass and all our bottles get recycled. So we are, you know, hugely, it's a hugely important aspect of our business and, and actually something we talk about the hedgerows a lot, but actually this, this is something that we're really keen to, to get across to people how important that size, size of uh, the business is for us. It's not just about making great products. It's about, you know, being conscious of what's uh, happening in the world around us and, and the environment in particular. So we, I'm, I'm getting really thirsty again. I don't know. <laughs> Go back and get another drink. And um, just while we're on the topic of um, distilling as well, someone has sent a question in saying, what age is the Bramble uh, whiskey and what type of casks do you use? So, okay, so the Bramble, so we're starting off, a Bramble whiskey is a, a fairly simple thing to do. And to be frank, you can make it yourselves. We make a delicious Bramble whiskey. We use, um, uh, um, we use a three-year-old whiskey, a three-year-old blended whiskey. So it, it's not, uh, you know, your single malts or anything like that. Uh, um, although if you do make it with single malt, it will be delicious. We use a three-year-old blended whiskey from Inverhouse in Airdrie. So a lowland whiskey, but a good quality blend. And then we're handpicking wild blackberries, which go in steep into the whiskey. Uh, and we're steeping them for around about three to four months uh, with a bit of sugar. The, the bramble, although it is a liqueur, the bramble whiskey is quite dry. So you get a nice whiskey uh, warmth at the back, really bold fruitiness up front. So, and they're steeped. I'm afraid the tanks are not very romantic. They are just stainless steel tanks because that's, you know, these are health and safety conscious times. So we're not steeping them in barrels or something romantic like that. They are, uh, yeah, good old stainless steel, which doesn't impart any flavor, but does provide a fantastic drink after a, a few months of steeping. Thank does that, does that, does I that think, completely answer I think, everything? I think that definitely answers that question. We have got another one, um, if, if you're happy to answer another one. Yeah, of um, course. We've yeah. got, what proportion of your botanical ingredients are sourced locally? Okay, so the... Um, well, that's a really good question uh, and having just been talking about the environment i've got to be uh, got to be you know got to be very upfront about this <coughs> so juniper uh, coriander angelica and orris root uh, are not sourced locally at all and in fact very hard to find most of uh, most of the juniper there is a business up in uh, northumberland i think they grow their own juniper but the growing season here is not really long enough uh, to really even there get um, the junipers to fruit properly so most juniper that goes into any gin you buy is generally from uh, <coughs> southeastern Europe, Romania, Bulgaria areas. So, uh, so those kind of botanicals do come from abroad. But of course, the uh, the the botanicals we've been talking about here, the nettles, uh, the uh, crab apples, the rose hips, they're all from the hedges around green farms. So all of those, uh, and slightly wider, further afield into Rider, we've got quite a few pickers around foragers who go out for us as well as us doing it uh, in the neighboring area so all those botanicals crab, rose hips crab apples nettle leaves You're being upstaged by a horse i'm being upstaged by a horse gone now, yeah. oh, oh, no. just, just trying to get into the picture uh, so yeah but all of those hedgerow botanicals are all, all sourced around here and what we do is we pick them slice them if we need to and then dry them so uh they and then they get uh, then we get then we can store and make them stuff throughout the year so yeah dried really the drying process really concentrates the flavors could you say then as well, on top of that, that I guess each batch would be a little bit different every year, depending on yeah. what slows you're getting? Yeah, well, that's a really, a really good point. No matter what product we're producing, because we're only ever using whole fruit in there or, or stuff picked from the hedgerows, it will vary like grapes in wine, although the, the gin industry and the slow gin industry is not quite as refined as the wine industry, where year on year you're noticing significant and subtle differences. But every batch we make will naturally be different because everything that's going in there is completely natural. So there are, one of course wants to get consistency, but sometimes we quite like a bit of sediment in there from the fruit, proving that we do use whole fruit in there. So, um, the, but there will be natural variation. Um, but as I say, we don't have uh, varieties of slows, for example, to give us kind of different elements and flavors. So we're just relying on what the weather does. In a dry year, you will get slightly more sour 
uh, slows than you do in a wet year, for example. So that's a you know a good example of, uh, of and we we would slightly compensate that with the sugar that we add into that. Brilliant. So and just one more from me, just personally, um, how do you kind of go about selecting what thing to try next when you're going to try a new product? So obviously, if you are going to try yeah. vodka or are you going to try some yeah. uh, whiskey, how do you go about choosing what to do next? Well, I tend to do what I've just done is I amble along a hedgerow and think uh, about what we could find on the basis of what grows together, goes together. So that's what we tend to look at. So here we've got you know, we've got meadow sweet alongside some nettles here. And so that's, that's where I go for inspiration. Um, you know, I go back to the hedges and that's a bit of pleasure for me. It allows me to say to my wife and my colleagues, I'm just going for a walk along the hedges. That's part of the planning process. I'm thinking about new products. So it is as simple as that. We, are, we, we, we passed, and I didn't talk about it, there's some wild raspberries just up the hill here. And uh, that raspberry gin is something that I'm thinking about at this moment in time. Uh, for this uh, for this summer so uh, that that will hopefully uh, might come to fruition shortly i think we should probably hold you to that one that sounds really <laughs> good <laughs> um so we haven't got any more questions coming in at the moment joff um so we'll probably just start tying up there yeah. um so again we'll send everyone the offer again in an email just after we've finished um and the recipe for joff's special vodka combination cocktail what was it along the hedge was it called was along it? the hedge i think along the hedge yeah. Yeah. yeah so we'll send you that over this afternoon um so thank you very much everyone for joining us um this as i say is the first session that we've tried of this so thank you very much yeah. for, for bearing with us and hopefully we'll be able to do similar things with slow motion in the future